you know, we, we had so many uh, wide open looks uh, the first half. You know, we have a uh, edit machine that we go back and look at possessions on tape. A lot of times I can't remember certain possessions, but you go back and you review them. I tell our guys, hey, knock some open shots down. Um, we, we got a lot of good looks. Mm. You know, we had some tough luck too. LJ makes a three and they call a foul on Devontae. Um, they scored a last possession in the first half, so at halftime the game could have been tied, easily tied. Um, so we, we battled through some, some, some tough breaks the first half. Then second half we just had some um, um, head scratch and turnovers. You know, turnovers for no reason. You know, this, if this was uh, Chris Everett, she was just slapping it into the net for no reason, hit it over the net. They might, they might hit it back into the net. Um, so we just had unforced forced errors. But once we settled down, made a couple of our shots, um, Jay Wright hit some good threes. And Leron Barnes might not have been the uh, best player on the floor tonight, but I thought he was absolutely the toughest player. He's a tough kid, and he is a winner. Um, but I thought, I thought our guys, guys fought. You know, we've, we've, uh, we're preaching a lot of things this year, uh, culture, uh, we're laying a foundation of how we want this this program to be, what we want to be known for, uh, and these these kids are really getting better at it. You know, we're playing a top 25 team in the country. At uh, we ran a little hammer play out of a timeout for Jay Rod. He gets a wide open three in the corner. That ball goes in. It's a one point game. So tells you about how uh, tough our kids are getting, how much better they're getting. Did you feel like you showed some growth when you go down 17 and play yourself? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, Maybe growth in terms of um, uh, mental toughness. You know, we, we've we've fought a lot of things. Uh, this team, we the biggest thing we fight is just our size. You know, uh, a team like SMU uh, takes advantage of the, our weakness. You know, we just don't have the size uh, to combat that, and <clears throat> and they bring it at you in waves. Um, but you know, we try to get them in other ways. But I, I thought our kids d defended. Uh, I thought we did a great job on Moore uh, tonight. Um, but they made a lot of tough shots too. They made a lot of tough shots at the end of the shot clock. We got them deep into the shot clock. And then we came out of the possession with nothing to show for it. Great defense. And then they hit a shot at the, uh, at the end of the shot clock. And so our, our, we're, we're getting better. I, and I can tell it, you know, people from Apar, Unfortunately, you know, you get judged by your record, and that's about it. But, and I understand that, and that's fair. Um, but I also know what we're building here, and, um, and I know where this program's going to be in a year or so. so. But uh, I really, really appreciate these kids. I do. I, I love this team. Um, I love their effort. I love their attitude. I love how they work and practice every day. Um, you know, we, we have um, – um, some deficiencies, there's not a lot we can do about. But uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of life lessons being learned and a lot of uh, growth being made. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy with them. Kelvin JC makes his first, I think it's his first start of the, yeah. the year. I mean, anything in terms of that or just mixing things up a little bit? Yeah, just, it's just culture issues. Just guys that uh, not um, practicing the way I want them to practice. Uh, I think you have to earn it. I'm not going to give them anything. They want to do it right, then fine. You come off the bench, you know. So um, this program's this is a great university. It's a great city, and we're going to have a great basketball program here. But the most important thing that we have going for us this year is not going to be our wins and losses. It's going to be the culture that we build and the kids that are coming into this program next year. These kids that are coming back, um, they're they're going to be great teachers for them. The, these kids this year had to learn on the fly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great point. That's, that's a great, great, great point. I, I, I coached a team that, um, you know, Hollis Price is the uh, winningest player in the history of the University of Oklahoma. He's on our coaching staff now. He won 111 games in four years. Do the math. I think that's 27 or 28, something like that. He averaged 27 or 28 wins in, in his four years there. Um, 
He was on a team that won 31 games, uh, three Big 12 championships, Final Four, 31 wins, Elite Eight, 29 wins, uh, all that stuff. But um, one, one of the teams that I have enjoyed, enjoyed the most, and I still stay in touch with a lot of these kids, was uh, my 1989 Washington State team. <laughs> Those were great kids, a lot like these kids, undermanned. Our two best players, one had a uh, infection in his right thigh. It blew up, and doctors couldn't figure it out, but we lost him for the year in November. Then we had a seven-foot center that broke his, um, not his wrist, but his, I guess it'd be his humerus bone. Um, lost him for a year, and we wind up playing a bunch of kids that should have been coming off the bench, and then we had nobody coming off the bench for those guys. And we wound up losing 18 consecutive games, 18. Uh, we beat Southern Cal to win our first conference game. Um, George Rattlin was the coach, and our best player was a guy named Harold Baby Miner. That was in 1989, I think, um, or maybe 90. I can't remember. 89, I think. Um, but then we lost 17 straight conference games. And then the Pac-10 tournament that year was in Tempe, Arizona. And we lost to, I don't remember who, 18 straight. But the next year, I think we won 17 or 18. The next year, we won 22. Uh, next year, we won 18 or 19. Next year, we won 20 in the NCAA tournaments. And we're off and running. But that, that, team, that team was important. That team, that team took the bullets for those teams that came after them. And this team's doing it doing um, uh, similar things. Although, you think about the last four games. Now, think about the last four games. We beat Rice, two good halves. And, and, and the thing I keep trying to explain to these kids is there's a difference in shooting poorly and playing poorly. We shoot poorly a lot of nights, but that doesn't mean we play poorly. We play really good against Rice. We just can't make a shot. But we win. Connecticut. I saw Connecticut beat Tulsa tonight by 25, 75 to, no, 70 to 45. We beat Tulsa and couldn't make a shot. We shot 37% and beat them because we played really good. And then against Tulsa, who was in the first place, uh, it's 36-29. We're up seven in first possession in the second half, and then we just can't make a shot. Uh, and so we go through that. So now in the last, those beat Rice, beat Connecticut, lose to Tulsa, we're 2-1. Okay, so now we come to the uh, SMU game. SMU is the best team we've played this year. Um, with under two minutes to go in the game, it's a four-point game, and we've got the ball. So I just tell you, our kids are competing, man. They are competing their tails off, and, and they're learning the most essential thing about um, uh, competition is that is, is you, you keep fighting. I don't care what the score is. Um, I have five timeouts. If I have to use my timeouts before the eight-minute mark of the second half, then so be it. You know, we're, we're going to keep these kids fighting. One more question. Yeah. You got your team's effort on the boards tonight compared to the last game. You got out-rebounded pretty heavily. Yeah. Actually, you guys actually matched. Are you happy about that? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, um, and, and that's why I made that statement about LeRon Barnes. You know, he's such a tough kid. He, he had, he's the only guy. Was he not the only one that had double figure, or did they have somebody? No. At 10 rebounds, he's 6'5", but he's Le – LeRon Barnes, would, if, if I had somebody that would carry our flag, um, you know, carry our banner, <clears throat> it would be LeRon. I, I want our program to be known for guys like LeRon Barnes because uh, I, I love that guy.